So once you remove your window screen from your window, lay it down on your workstation. Now you want to take two measurements. You want to measure the length and the width so you know what replacement screen size will fit. So I'm going to take, this needs to be at least, at least 30 inches by 20. Okay, after your length and width, you want to note the color of your screen. This one tends to be black or charcoal. Then what is the type of screen? Is it fiberglass? Is it aluminum? Is it like a pet friendly polyester? Um, is it more like a stainless steel? So if all that gets too confusing, let alone the mesh and the wire diameter or strand size, simply take a photograph of it or once I go and remove it, I can take the sample in and compare it to what I'm going to replace it with. Okay, so next I'm going to remove the old screen. What I'm looking for are the groove channels. This side doesn't have it. I'm going to flip it over. And what I have here is groove channels that hold the screen in place with what's called the spline cord. So I'm going to use a small flathead screwdriver and I'm going to find a, where the spline cord starts and ends and I can tell already it starts right here so I'm just going to use my screwdriver and flip that up. Sometimes you'll have four separate pieces but I can tell this is all one piece and I'm actually going to try to save this spline cord if it's in good condition and reuse it. Otherwise, I'll have to find spline cord the right size and replace it. Okay, so I'm going to carefully remove the spline cord. And sometimes this comes out really easy and other times it might be a little more challenging. Uh, I know where I live, sometimes I get a little bit of salt crystallization. And so I might have to dip a little soap and water on it just to loosen it up. But let me go ahead and continue to remove the spline cord. Again, right around this tab. I might have to help it through with the screwdriver a little bit. And then, voila, finished. So this spline cord looks to be in really good shape. So I'm just going to simply clean it off. So yeah, just soaked the spline cord in soapy water real quick light, and now I'm going to use this rag to kind of run it through. And you can see what it's picking up, but just to clean everything off. And this is still in very good condition. It looks virtually brand new, so I'm going to reuse it. So I'm going to use my hands to push from underneath. And yeah, your screen's really going to be in there pretty darn tight, and it might be crystallized to the, in the grooves. But regardless, once you get it started, just work your way through all the corners, and there it starts to lift off. Now where the screen might become a little more difficult to remove is around the tab areas. looks like it's going to be. So just to move that tab out of the way, I can easily replace that back in when I go to replace uh, the new screen. There you go. And you can note how the tabs were on because sometimes they're used to press the screen in as well. So regardless, just pay attention to that. If the tabs are helping to push the screen on because they have these little, the tabs have little channel grooves as well, just note that because you'll put them back in the same way and they typically line up under uh, right dead center where those push button uh, pins are, at least in my case. So to give you an example, the little push button that locks the window uh, frame, uh, the screen frame in the window. 
but I'm going to use my soapy water here and I'm going to clean out those groove channels and I'm going to get rid of some of that debris and then for some of those areas that were salt crystallized this will help clean that out and then I'll use my rag with the screwdriver and I'll just pick up all that fluid and debris and then I'll wait for the sun to kind of dry it out which would only be you know maybe five ten minutes and I'll come back to work so I have the old screen removed my screen is nice and clean all the channels are nice and clean and the channels are up this is where the duct tape comes into play and this is where the brand new screen mesh uh, we begin using so I need to measure it and lay it out and what's going to happen is typically you want to have a little extra they recommend two inches for all four sides I'm just going to do an inch I've done this before an inch is plenty but I'm going to secure with duct tape Again, I have an inch on this side. I'm overlapped on both of those. And I'll bring it over here. And then I'm going to secure it off on this side. be enough screen for all four sides okay so this is where the spline tool now comes in now that I have my screen kind of preset and I've got it taped off on the spline tool you've got a convex end which is more of a pointed end and you have a concave end which is kind of a grooved end you look at your spline cord, the concave is what kind of grooves this. The convex end is so you can run the screen in the channel grooves. Like that. Now I'm going to use it on this end. I'm going to kind of hold this end a little bit because I want to make sure the screen is also going to press somewhat tight. I don't want it super laxed. So because I'm reusing the spline cord that was the old one, I'm making sure the corner is in the spot to start it. And then this is where it ended up finishing, right here. So I'm kind of just pushing that down. And then I'll use the tool to help set it. So this is where I need to put those tabs back in. So they're going to fit over the screen right in line with those little uh, spring-loaded balls. Then I put the spline cord, line it up. Okay, and then I'll use my tool. And around the tabs, it's always a little trickier because the tab kind of narrows that groove channel. And then what you can do is use your little screwdriver if you need to press down on that little groove, press down on the spline cord to fit it in that groove where the tabs are. So finishing off the last area, my tape is holding this screen secure, and then 
pin that in and I'll snip off the little extra. But I'll push those corners in and make them tight and clean them up. So when you're using the spline tool and you're running that along the groove in the channel, it's obviously going to pull the screen um, and the idea is hopefully it's pulling it either it's going to pull from the side in or it's going to pull when I have this side secure it'll hopefully pull the screen tight so it's not super flimsy it is flexible but it's got some tautness to it and that's what I'm looking for otherwise you'll look at the screen you'll see how wavy looking it is rather than nice and flush okay but let me just take a look at this yes that's going to be this is very nice and taut, but it's not overly tight. It's got a little bit of flexibility when you touch it. All right, so now for the finishing touches. I'm gonna take my utility knife, make sure it's nice and sharp, and I'm gonna trim the excess of the screen and tighten it up, cut that off right along the border edge, typically just above the spline cord. So this is another reason why they suggest when you measure your screen, you leave an extra couple inches for all four corners, all four sides, so you have enough material that you can trim to fit and you can hold on to it here. Here we go. So I got, let me finish these other two sides, but you can see once that's trimmed, how this is gonna be a nice, clean cut look. So now that my window screens are repaired, it's time to hang them back up. I hope this video helps you out with your project.